Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and in this short video, uh, another video in our series of videos dealing with non-parametric non -parametric statistics, uh, we're going to present, uh, uh, I suppose, uh, a technique in relation to how to calculate the Spearman rank or the correlation coefficient. Uh, and this particular correlation coefficient, uh, we typically calculate this, this coefficient uh, when our variables don't meet the criteria uh, required for, uh, with respect to, let's say, the Pearson correlation coefficient, where there's an expectation that the variables uh, are continuous, measured on a, an interval stroke ratio scale. Uh, in this example here, I have I have two variables. I have a individual survey score, and I have how much money they spent uh, for lunch. Uh, just a fictitious example here, yeah. Uh, but when respect to the survey score, the survey scores are actual actually ordinal values. Uh, they're the average of ordinal items. Uh, so hence, they don't meet the criteria in relation to the, peer, uh, the, 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 the Pearson correlation coefficient. They're measured on an ordinal scale, not an interval ratio scale. So in the case where you have an ordinal variable or two ordinal variables, uh, or an ordinal variable and a continuous uh, interval ratio variable, uh, with the most appropriate thing to do is the Spearman rank order correlation uh, for those to calculate the, the, the strength of association between the two variables. Uh, the statistic is quite straightforward to calculate. Uh, it's a small or subscript s to represent uh, to differentiate it from the Pearson or value uh, for the sample. Uh, the yes in this case represents the Spearman. And simply it's equal to 1 minus 6 times uh, the sum of the squared distances or the squared differences between the ranks uh, of the paired values, uh, which needs to be divided by n, which is the number of paired observations, times n squared uh, minus 1. So to calculate this correlation coefficient, uh, we need to know n, how many paired observations there are. In this case, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So in this case, n is equal to 10. So you can see that we actually have the denominator of this particular this particular fraction straight away. It's 10 times 100 minus 1, which is 10 times 99, which is 990. Okay? The only thing that's missing is the numerator here to actually calculate this correlation. Um, so what is this d squared? Well, it's the difference between the rankings of these particular observations. So what we do is we need to set, create a set of ranks. Uh, in other words, we need to for each variable we need to rank the observations within that variable uh, relative to each other. Uh, now we have to be careful in case there are, there are paired observations, in case there, there are observations that repeat. For example, in the survey score variable. You can see that 4 occurs here, and also occurs here, and also any other repeating values. We have 2.5 here, and we have 2.5 here. So this is a nice example where we have repeating values, and so we have to make a slight modification in relation to the table. But when there's no repeating values, this actually becomes even more straightforward. So what we need to do is we need to, we need to let's say, we need to rank, let's say this is, let's call this our x, and let's call this our y. So we need to rank our x values. And the way we do it is, because we're creating a new ordinal scale, we rank them from smallest to largest. The smallest value getting rank 1, the largest value getting uh, rank 10 or 100 or whatever it might be, depending on how many observations there is. So in relation to the x variable, you can see that the smallest value, and I'm going to ring these as I go through them, uh, the smallest observation is uh, 1.8. So that's my first value, so I'm going to give that a rank of 1. It's the smallest observation. Uh, the next smallest observation, I suppose, it seems to be uh, 2.4, if I'm not mistaken. I have to be careful here. It uh, seems to be 2.4. So that's my second one. So that gets a rank of 2. Okay. Now what we're doing, we're going to ignore pairs and trebles and repeating values and just keep keep giving them values as we go tr down through them. The next, the next, uh, let's say, uh, largest value in the data set is, oh, we'll use this 2.5 here, okay? And what we'll do is we'll say that that's a 3, okay? Oh, and this 2.5 here, uh, we'll say that that's a 4. And let's just keep in mind that these two things here, okay, these two things here are are representing the ranks for the same value okay we'll come back to that now in a moment okay so we've got 2.5 is the is next largest uh, what's next well we have what's after that we might have if i'm not mistaken 3.4 3.4 uh, should be a rank of 
5, that's the next rank. Uh, after 3.4, we have 3.6. Well, 3.6 should be a rank of 7. The next largest value uh, seems to be 4. 